Hello everyone, lovely to see you, Holger, Nathan, hello Walter, Shai, hello Shai, Frank, lovely to be with you. Our true, real experience is this borderless beingness, alive. vibrant with the, the peace the wonder the transparency No borders. A wide open field of being, knowing, and not knowing. Knowing of being, being knows somehow, it knows it is. I know I am. Not knowing in that there are no descriptive, there is no possible description that can describe the undescribable. this wide open field of being, knowing, not knowing.
is our reality. The one reality, the reality of I, and the reality of everything, whatever the mind conceives. whatever is perceived. Within this reality there are no separate whatever, no separate anything, no separate people, no separate minds, no separate mountains, no separate worlds, no separate consciousnesses, it's nothing separate. quite a wonder in this in this non-dual beingness the mind is tranquil in the body the body is merged with the universe. There is no entity seeking anything. Because the eye that perceives is this borderless, transparent beingness and not some physical, limited, personal reality. Your reality and universal reality is one These are feeble words, meager words being shared to refer to that which is beyond words. Beyond mind, beyond conception. You don't start anywhere and you don't end anywhere. There is no location to I. There is no material substance, no physicality 
to I. no material substance. And yet, I is undeniable. Real. The reality of our experience not the stream of thoughts and concepts and perceptions. And yet this I, which is not an object, is empty and yet full, objectively empty, phenomenally empty, and nominally full. Full of self-knowing, non-objective, non-phenomenal self-knowing, the noumenal knowingness. Knowing of its infinite creativity, knowing that its creativity has no independent reality, knowing that the reality of creation is I, the creator. So this reality is phenomenally empty, but nominally not empty. And this experience of non-emptiness, noumenal non-emptiness, and a phenomenal emptiness is known as peace, and intelligence, freedom. love and joy. So one could say that in a relative way of speaking. That the culmination of the investigation, the culmination of the inquiry is P. 
peace, and freedom, and joy, and happiness. So if there is anything you would like to share or explore, hi Magdi, I would very much like to explore something, if that's okay with you. Yes, yes, Shai. I just got home, by the way, late from a family event, and instead of going to sleep, I decided I'm going to come to Satsang and explore this thing that's going to that has been bothering me for. God knows how long. Okay. So I'll split my question into two. It's, it's about the same uh, subject, but I'll split it into two to make it easier. Uh, on the last satsang I was in, uh, you explained about decision-making and choice. You said that uh, everything is being perceived by uh, I, I awareness, I mean, so, so uh, basically, uh, let me lead by, let me give an example. That's gonna be the best way to, to, to illustrate this. Um, I sing, okay, but uh, I'm not making any money out of it. For me, singing is like uh, a therapy for my soul. Now, Oftentimes what happens to me is uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to illustrate this. I'm going to thinking, I'm, I'm starting to think, should I sing this song or should I, I sing this song? And then, you know, the mental chatter begins, the mental blah, blah begins. Oh, but, the, but I like this better, but this is going to get more plays. But, but wait a minute, I also like this, but this is better. But this is the, I should do this, I should do this. And at the end, the decision is being made, then I'm gonna do this, this song. Mm -hmm. Did I make that choice or did awareness make that choice? And on, on what basis was that choice 
actually made? Was it based on conditioning? Was it based on, because oftentimes they, they say that the separate self, that there is no, they say non-duality that uh, decisions are being made, but there is no decision maker. So if I decided to do this song, uh, when I say I, but who decided? I just give this, yeah. It's, it's always, always I which decides. Now the question is, what is this I that decides? Is this I that decides assumed, felt, and believed to be a person, to be a personal mind or a personal brain or a personal self or a, a personal chooser? Or is the I refer to whatever it is that right now perceives, because it is that whatever it is that perceives the thought or the, the feeling, gee, I'd love to, I'd love to choose song B instead of song A. It is that I which perceives that uh, choosing thought is that the eye which chooses. In other words, the eye which perceives is the eye that uh, uh, ultimately uh, chooses. Now, when the eye that perceives meaning the I that right now hears these words, is assumed to be whatever, a son, a father, a mother, a, a smart guy, a great musician, whatever. Then we have, uh, we've, created a fictitious, a fictitious chooser, a fictitious entity, a fictitious I, because there aren't, there aren't two, two I, there aren't two selves. There is just one reality. So you have to make a choice which reality I refers to. In my choice, I refers to whatever it is that right now perceives this perception, right? That right now hears these words and somehow through this body mind is speaking these words. So Sorry, you, you said something very profound. I just didn't quite understand that. When I awareness uh, leaves he's a person, then there is a, a, an illusion of of a person be, being a choice of a personal chooser or a personal doer. I don't quite understand. I, I, what is it that right now hears these words? I, uh, awareness, not, not the person. And what is it that right now? perceives the thought that says, for example, I want to have dinner after Satan. I awareness. I mean, is there is there in your 
near experience any other I? I mean, is there any other I besides awareness? Well, I will admit that sometimes I, I still fall into the illusion of being a person. Sometimes. Yes, it, but is there any other I in your experience, any other I in your experience besides the one I, the reality that perceives right now? Uh, no, no, there's just the I that perceives everything, including the all, all this uh, uh, mess I have in my head. Whatever, you can call it a mess, you can call it... Uh, God's whisper, you can call it uh, the song or the song of uh, the universe. It doesn't matter what you call it. But yes, so, okay. so, so are, are you saying there is, there is no other I, but well, whatever it is that perceives right now? No, there is, there is only one I that perceives. Okay, but is there any other, is there, is there another I that does not perceive? Because you said there is one I that, is there any, any other I besides I, besides whatever, whatever it is that is perceiving these words right now, perceiving this perception right now? Is there any other? No, there isn't any other. You, you, you're sure of that, you're certain of that. Yes, there is only one I that perceives. There is no two, there are no two I that, can perceive there is just one. Okay, and this this I that we're referring to is whatever it is that right now is hearing these words, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, so so whenever you meaning there's only one I, you meaning whatever whatever it is that right now is hearing these words, whenever you perceive a feeling. Do you, do you, meaning do you, I, does I become becomes something else? Uh, no. Does, does this I, whatever it is that is hearing these words right now, does it, does it change? Have you, do you have any, any experiential evidence that this I is something that changes over time and space? No, I don't. Do you have any experiential evidence that this I, whatever it is that hears these words, changes when a certain, when perceptions, when perceptions change, when that which is perceived changes? If you're perceiving a volcano or you're perceiving an ocean or you're perceiving a sunset, does the eye, whatever it is that perceives, does that change? No, no, it doesn't. Okay, is it your experience that this eye changes when it's perceiving uh, a beautiful feeling or, or a, a negative feeling? Oh, well, that, that's a really soft spot because of yeah yeah that's a good it's a very good question let me let me oh that's a really soft spot let, let, let me tell you something oftentimes oftentimes um I, oftentimes i would have a uh, fear insecurity negative thoughts uh, and, and feelings because thoughts and feelings come together it's it's not they're not separate so oftentimes i would get a negative uh, feeling and a thought or self-criticism and all that stuff. Now, I, I understand that I am, I, the real I, the, the one I is, is perceiving it, but oftentimes the, the negative thoughts and feeling and the self-criticism thought and feeling, they feel like they're, like they're glued to this I, that I cannot, yes, I, I perceive it, but it feels like it's glue and I cannot shake it off. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand because, you know, when we, there are some when young children um, that they have an imaginary friend. They, they have an imaginary friend and they, they talk to their imaginary friend, they, 
they play with their imaginary friend. And when their imaginary friend is not feeling good, they're very, very unhappy. But no, but but this this no this... no I understand what you're saying. I understand, but you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I do. Because they feel they feel like really, really close to the imaginary friend, you know. Yes. They even, they even have a name for their friend and they they even take their friend to school. It's an imaginary friend. They take their friend to school. And they even they share their lunch with their friend. And when their friend is unhappy, they're very unhappy. They're very unhappy. They cannot sleep at night. They, they're feeling really unhappy. In a way, it's a similar thing that we, we have gotten so habituated to go along with the belief and the feeling that I'm a set of feelings and sensations and images and beliefs and So we're so habituated to associate I with the, the body mind. So when the body mind is feeling sick, we are feeling sick. When the body mind is feeling depressed, we're feeling depressed. When the body mind is, is hungry, we're feeling hungry. Yeah, and in my, you know, in my case, it's like so much self-criticism and uh, negative uh, thinking about everything. I uh, not everything, but but about what is it? What is it that you're criticizing? Oh well, I told you that uh, music is for me uh, a therapy for my soul. And let's say I pick, I, I chose a song, and and then I decided to sing that song, and it was you know everything was edited. But but the dog does not stop there. Then the, the, this nagging mind comes in with the feelings, right, and says, uh, uh, "Oh, maybe I, I could have done it better." Yeah. And then, you oh, know, I, but, I, but I did. But I did my best. But then another thought comes and says, "Oh, but but this I should do better." But no, but, not. Uh, you like you like to play this game, okay? No, I don't like it. it, it, it if, you don't, if you didn't like it, you wouldn't play it. If you didn't like it, you wouldn't play it. But I don't like it, I swear. No, no. <laughs> don't it's try torture. To there is something that likes it. You, they, to a certain extent, you like it. You wouldn't play it if you didn't like it. So how do I stop liking it? Because, goddamn, I don't feel like I like it. I mean, it's torture. Well, I mean, if you have a clarity that is torture, then if you have a pair of boots, that are your foot is size nine and the boots are size eight. And when you wear the boots, it's torture. So then what do you do? You, you don't wear those boots, right? Right. So once you're aware that this is torture, it doesn't make sense to wear those boots again, right? Right. Now you're saying it's torture. Yes. So you know it's torture. Yeah. You know it's torture. So why then do you continue to judge yourself? I'm afraid, I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of doing a bad job. Oh, oh so you have a good reason. Okay, so, so, okay, so, so all right, all right, we, we're going to change the story. So you have a size nine feet and you have size eight shoes. And when you wear the size eight shoes, it hurts you really badly. But... But you're afraid of not finding a nine size nine boots, or you're afraid uh, that uh, if you don't wear those size nine size eight boots, you would have wasted your money. So therefore, you wear them, and you are unhappy and miserable every step of every step you take. You're unhappy and miserable. Okay, so you have a good reason to be unhappy and miserable. So okay, so that's good. If you are, if you have a good reason to be miserable, 
that's it's your call you know it's your call it's your it's your it's your game it, it's your game you you play that game so you you have a good reason to to feel miserable then what they say be my guest but <laughs> it's your choice so i will choose differently then absolutely i mean i mean if <laughs> If if you if you want to if, if you you don't have to wear those size eight, eight shoes why I mean I mean maybe you have a good reason I don't know I'm just saying if it's up to you you take a look just there's so much fear of failing and not being good enough okay so you have a good reason then then you have a good reason you want to protect the fear you want to make sure that the fear is uh, is you know has a lot of nice cream around it is very you know it has a nice velvety blanket you know sure of course so then you have a good reason to uh what do you say the mother takes the baby in her arms you take the fear in your arms and do uh, you sing a lullaby a lullaby you sing a lullaby for the fear okay well good so this is what you enjoy you enjoy singing lullaby to the fear no 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 i don't enjoy it <laughs> well, you, just, it you just you just but you just said that the fear is is really important for you no i just can't shake it off if i could shake it off i would well the fear the fear it, you give it the importance that you want to give it so the fear is basically a sensation that arises to you yes and then you say, oh, gee, no, 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 no. This, sens this sensation should not be, right? Yeah. I have to get rid of it. Okay, yeah. so, this, so then you don't need to do that. You don't need to say, oh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, 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 to that sensation. If you, if you don't say no, no, no to the sensation, if you do not struggle or argue with the emotion or the sensation, I, I may suggest, I'm suggesting that for you. I'm suggesting, okay, well, experience a sensation. You can call it fear, you can call it sensation, you can call it a cosmic event, you can call it uh, a universal uh, vibration. Uh, it is all of that and none of that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So if you are trying to protect yourself from a sensation, then you're going to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the, the, the blaming, the self-criticism, the, you know, the various defense mechanisms that uh, you are habituated to perform or to do. Right? Yes, I guess. Yes, yes. Not I guess, I know. So, yeah. So, so you can explore the fear as being first a neutral sensation, experience, appearance, manifestation. You can explore that. Mm. And you can explore the possibility of experiencing that without using the old evasive. Sorry, what's is what, what's evasive in English? Evade the the old uh, uh, blaming, escaping, escaping the old oh, oh, okay. uh, 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 strategies. The strategies. Yeah of escaping mm -hmm. and you can also contemplate that you, the reality that perceives right now is not a man or a woman or a person or a mother or a father or a son. And that's where there is only one real you. And this real you is not has no name, the body has a name, shy. Yeah. The body is, you know, five foot seven, whatever, it's the body, the body, but 
you can contemplate that you are not an object. You are the reality that perceives, the reality of all objects, the reality. And that nothing ever happens to reality. You can break your arm, you can uh, spill a bottle of milk, you could uh, uh, drive your car into the tree and break the car. You could uh, lose an arm, your right arm, but nothing happens to you, your awareness, you, you, the reality that perceives, the reality that is, right? Yes. So you can, you have, so you, you can, so, so, so you have the understanding, right? You have the understanding, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so if you have the understanding and you decide to play the game, oh my God, I am shy, I'm not playing good music, I am making the wrong choice. So then, then you're exercising your freedom of playing the game that you are shy. You're, uh, ex you're exercising your freedom. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. This is why Francis often says that ignorance is uh, our exercising our freedom. Yes. Our, yeah. Sometimes he says our last freedom. Yes, I understand. I understand what I have to do now. Thank you so much, Magdi. Okay, Shai. <laughs> So there is Sid who has uh, his or her hands raised. I don't know whether Sid is actually Sid, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, I think that is my friend. Ah, okay, so I don't know. It could be that Sid is, uh, you know what I mean, Holger, maybe somebody who uh, wants to visit us. So let's let's see. Let's see who Sid is. Okay, Sid. Let's hear you. Okay. Go Hello. ahead. Go ahead, Sid. I think I think the conversation was really interesting. I, I think I, I muted Sid uh, because um, yeah. it's the same. It's the it's, same. Yes. So let's get rid of Sid. Yeah. Wait, Put in Put in waiting room. Okay. No, oops, I got rid of them. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> Our good old visitors. We are we are loved in that in that uh, realm of uh, <laughs> games and uh, hawks hawks playing hoaxes. Any questions? Uh, Magdi, hi. Hello, Nathan. <clears throat> um, in the last few days, I was um, I was listening and also wrote it down. Uh, Francis' um, meditation about the flow, which I absolutely loved, um, and I went more. I went deeper and deeper into it, and it spoke to me more and more. There's just one thing that is kind of a bit nebulous in me. When Francis was speaking on the flow, what my kind of intuition or understanding was that the flow is actually awareness, consciousness. And in the flow, things appeared, appearances appeared. That the flow was like a home ground that carries in a way the manifestations, but there was kind of a bit of a confusion or um, not complete understanding because my perception or my understanding perhaps of awareness, consciousness is that it is transparent, it's changeless and it's what you call non-movement and that the movement appears in non-movement. So is this flow a certain dynamic aspect of consciousness of awareness and things kind of appear in it and disappear in it? And the observer rises out of this movement or which may be non-movement and then comes back to it because the oneness of the observer and the flow, I found it very, very 
close to my heart, this non-separation, this um, the, the fact that I, I see manifestation in myself and there's something so open and borderless and it sinks back into it, goes back into it. But I always kind of thought that there's something which is, doesn't change, doesn't move. And yet this flow has this almost movement out of time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I just wondered what your uh, thoughts, what your understanding about the flow is, because I found so many beautiful things in this meditation, mm -hmm. uh, so beautiful understanding. And it just this thing, is it really, the, is my understanding of consciousness of awareness as the background that doesn't change and allows change to appear. Mm -hmm. Right. And how, how do you understand it with the, with, with the flow itself, which is beyond mm -hmm. concept, of course. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. So, the river, the river, doesn't move, right? Meaning the entirety of the river. The entirety of the river is one river. The river as a totality, as a whole, doesn't move. And yet, a river is movement. Meaning there is there is movement within the river, although there is movement within the river, the river as, it, as its totality, as, as its wholeness is, is not moving. It's not going anywhere, it's the river. Or maybe the ocean, maybe you know, the ocean doesn't move as, as, a, as its entirety. The universe as its entirety, entirety, isn't going anywhere as an entirety, as a totality. But there is movement within the universe. Galactics, galactic fields and planetary. Now the awareness, consciousness, when we say, when we we're speaking about awareness, consciousness, the experience of awareness and consciousness of consciousness is the experience of peace. In undisturbable peace, a peace that is causeless peace. It doesn't move. Only that which has a cause, which is an effect, moves. Depending on the cause, it moves. But peace or being, being meaning, meaning the amnes, beingness, doesn't have an opposite. But to say being is and non-being is not. Being is and non-being is not. So there's only being, the non-being is not. So being has no opposites. It's not, it's not becoming. Being is not becoming. And yet within being, which is a non-movement, which is not a becoming, there are activities. There is what we refer to as the human being experience. There is the, the, the tomato being experience. It goes from a seed to a plant and a flower and then a tomato. That's within, within being. So from the perspective of consciousness, 
I, I refers to the peace of being. The in in this disruptible, non disruptible, disrupt not non disruptible peace. And then there is the expression, the creativity of consciousness. The flow of this conversation. But it's a flow, isn't it? It's not actually interrupted because the background of experience is this peace, is this presence, is beingness. And beingness, the peace of being, is not interrupted. It's, it's one could say, uh, I don't use this word too often, but one could say continuous, <laughs> but not continuous in time, continuous in the eternity of being. So, within this continuity is the flow. Of expressions and creations and sensations and uh, is a harmony in uh, in the reality, in, in, in the absolute sense, is a harmony. It's the, it's the harmony of the, the yin and the yang, or the hourglass, the hourglass when you, when you flip it, you know, the, the sand goes down, yes. it's yeah. more emptiness and less sand, but there is less emptiness and more sand on the other side. It's a, it's a flow, it's a relationship. So there is a continuity. So we, in the breath, there is a continuity. Now the, the discontinuity is an impression, is a belief. For example, the belief that, oh, when this body, when the breath is inter interrupted, is interrupted and the body is no longer breathing, then something is going to happen to the universe. Something is going to happen to I, I being universal being. Something is going to happen to I, to consciousness. So that's a sort of a disruption of the flow, but it's not real disruption because the flow is still going on. It's just an impression, a local impression of uh, the contraction, but this, this contraction isn't interrupting, isn't disrupting the totality, because even this contraction, this resistance, this hesitation, this identification is uh, not only it is imaginary, but it's also, it's also within the totality. It's part of the reflections in the mirror, the images on the screen. Like uh, when the river is flowing, sometimes there is a little bit of rapids, rapids, the rocks and, or a small waterfall. You could say it's some, some sort of interruption in the river or some sort of uh, event. But in the totality of the river, it's a non-event, it's, it's part of the whole. So the thing to understand is that the, the flow is not a disruption in, within consciousness and it's not consciousness that is flowing. The totality does not flow. Is it? A flow is an impression within the river. There is an impression of a flow. But the total river, a river it's, a, it's, one, it's one river. It does, does not flow. Where is it going? <laughs> yes. 
Sakti, thank you, I get it. I just wanted to say that the meditation today was sublime and thank you so much for it. It just brought everything so clear. Thank you, Madhu, thank you very much. Thank you all.